Hi everyone. In the last lecture, we have already seen the definition of finite state machine (FSM). Okay, so this definition we have already seen. I told you that from the digital logic point of view, you can notice the sequence circuit that is a that is a finite state machine because in a sequence circuit, what you have in a sequence circuit, you have flip flop. So if you have k flip flop, then basically the sequence circuit can have okay two power k states. So maximum two power k states will be possible. Okay, so two power k states means you have a finite number of states. So number of states that are possible in the sequence circuit that is finite. So that is the reason sequence circuit is also known as uh, sequence circuit is also a finite state machine. This we have already seen in the last lecture. Okay, so you can notice your DFA, NFA in theory of computation subject you study DFA, NFA. Okay, so those are also finite state machine, and you can notice sequence circuit is also finite state machine, and we will study two more machines. We will Study that is Mealy machine, Murray machine, Murray machine. So these two machines are also finite state machine. Okay. Anyway, so this is the idea. This we have already seen in the last lecture. Okay. Now let's see how to design a finite state machine. So for example, let us assume I told you one thing. I told you that uh, actually here. Remember here our interest is in transducers. So let me again repeat that a finite state machines. This we have already seen. So majorly we have two type of finite state machine. One is acceptors, okay. One is acceptors, or I can say automata, okay. So automata, so finite state automata that you already know. For example, DFA, NFA, these are your finite automata, or I can say these are these are finite state machines, but these are acceptors. These are automata, okay. So they will take an input. So the string you will give a string as an input, and they will tell you whether uh, the string is accepted or rejected. So they will answer yes or no. Okay, so you can notice these are language acceptors. So I can say finite state machine. I can say, for example, you have something called language acceptors. Okay, so this automata you have, and also there is something called transducers. Okay, transducers, transducers. Okay, what is a transducer? Transducer. I told you three type of transducer we will study. Okay, one is your sequence circuit. Another is your Mealy machine. Okay, another is your Murray machine. Okay, so what is the transducer? The definition we have already seen in the last class. I told you transducer they compute function. They basically they compute function. Okay, so you can notice output of DFA comma NFA that will be uh, yes or no. But uh, the output of transducer will be some function. Okay, so that is the difference between automata and transducer. So remember in theory of computation subject we study these two topics. So okay, you can study these two topics in the theory of computation subject. Okay, in TOC you can study these two topics. But in digital logic we basically we are focusing on this. Okay, so in the digital logic subject we are going to study these finite state machines. Okay. So these finite state machines we will study in a digital logic. Okay, so you can notice in the digital logic we study these three uh, transducers, or I can say these three uh, finite state machines we are going to study. Okay, now let us see how to create a finite state machine. Basically, how to create this type of finite state machine. So you can notice finite state machine actually can be represented either using a table or using a diagram. You know, if you have a if you have a sequence circuit, I told you. Okay, that if you have a sequence circuit, now that sequence circuit has what? Okay, that sequence circuit, the behavior of this sequence circuit, the working of this sequence circuit, either you can represent using a state table. So if you have a sequence circuit, you can create a state table, or you can create a state diagram. Okay, so both of them you can create. So you have a sequence circuit. Now I am saying that the behavior of this sequence circuit can be represented using a state table or a state diagram. Okay, and I told you the sequence circuit is nothing but a finite state machine because in a sequence circuit we have finite number of states. Okay, so I can say that finite state machine also the behavior I can say finite state machine also can be represented either using a state table or using a state diagram. Okay, so this is the point. Finite state machine can be represented in form of a state table or in form of a state diagram. Okay, so let us see one example and let us see how to create uh, the finite state machine. Okay. So consider this example. Consider this problem. Okay. So a problem is given to you. I told you that uh, this uh, sequence circuit, Mealy machine, Murray machine. I told you that they compute function. Okay. So basically, some input you will give, and they will uh, give you some output. Okay. So this we have already seen. Okay. So you already know that if you have a transducer, if you have a transducer, or I can say if you have a sequence circuit, if you have a Sequence circuit. Let us assume you have a sequential circuit, or you have a Mealy machine, or you have a Mealy machine. Okay, you have a Mealy machine, or you have a Murray machine, or you have something called 
Mure machine. Okay, so you can notice that. Okay, these these are called transducers. Okay, so what it means? It means that you give some input, some input you are giving, and they will compute some function. Okay, so they will give you some output. Okay, so some function will be computed. Okay, so this is the behavior. Now you can notice this uh, this behavior. It uh, this is the specification. So basically, we need to create a sequential circuit. We need to create finite state machine. Okay, this we need to create, and for this problem, so this problem is given to you. So this is called specification. So remember, this is called specification. Okay, so actually, okay, so specification is already given to you. Okay, specification of problem. Okay, so the specification of problem, or I can say. Okay, what you need to do basically. Okay, so this is what you need to do. This is saying that a circuit we have to design. Okay, which will detect, which will detect three or more ones in the serial bit stream. Okay, so basically uh, this question is saying that you have a, you need to design a circuit. Okay, you need to design a circuit. So this circuit you need to design. Okay, so some circuit, some finite state machine, or I can say some sequential circuit you have to design. Okay, so this. Uh, finite state machine or sequence circuit. So this circuit you have to design, and this circuit what it will do? It will take the input, okay, in a serial bit. Okay, so you can notice the input is a serial bit string. Okay, so this input is coming as a serial bit string. For example, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, and so on. Okay, so you can notice the input is giving uh, the input is coming in a serial manner. Okay, one by one. First this bit is coming, then this bit, then this bit, then this bit like this. Okay, so one by one bits are coming. Okay, so the input is coming as a serial bit string. Okay, and what this circuit needs to do? This circuit needs to detect three or more ones. Okay, so we need to detect whether in this bit stream, in this bit stream, do we have three or more ones? Okay, so this is what we need to detect. Okay, so the question is saying that, okay, uh, three or more consecutive ones we have to detect. Okay, so you can notice the output will be one. What this is saying? This is saying that output will be one when you detect three or more consecutive ones in the stream. Else, the output will be zero. Okay, so you can notice uh, in this bit stream, if you detect, if you detect, uh, okay, consecutive three ones, three or more ones, if you detect consecutively, then output should be one. Else, output should be zero. Okay, so here I can say, for example. Okay, so example, let me tell, let me tell you. Okay, so you can notice this string you are giving, this bit string you are giving. Okay, and some function will be computed. Some function will be computed. Okay, for example, you can notice that to this circuit, to this circuit, you need to design a sequence circuit. Sequence circuit means finite state machine. So you need to design a finite state machine. Okay, and I am saying that if this is your bit string, let us assume this is your bit string. Okay, let us assume this is the bit string. Okay. Now you can notice if this is the bit stream, then what should be the output? Okay. So you can read the output will be one whenever there are three or more consecutive ones. Okay. Then the output will be one. Else the output will be zero. Okay. So you can notice that. Okay. When you read this one. Okay. The this this is coming in a okay bitwise manner. So the input I told you the input is coming in a bitwise manner. Okay. So in every clock pulse one bit is coming. Okay. In the first clock pulse this bit will come. In the next clock pulse, this bit will come. Okay, so these bits. Okay, so bitwise these are coming. Okay, so bitwise in serial manner. In a serial manner, this is coming. The input is coming in a serial manner. So remember, in the first clock, this will come. In the second clock, this will come. In the third clock, this will come. Okay. So when you see this in the first clock, okay, and remember, you want to detect. You want to detect three or more consecutive ones. Okay, detect three or more consecutive ones. This is what you need to do. Okay, so you can notice that when you see this zero, then the output should be zero. Okay, so here you I can say here uh, the output will be zero. Okay, so the output will be zero. Okay, when you see this one, then the output will be what? Okay, so when you see this zero, then the output will be zero. And when you see this one, okay, but you need to detect three or more consecutive ones. If you see three or more consecutive ones, then the output will be one. Else the output will be zero. So here also output zero. Then you see this in the next clock pulse, this zero will come. Okay, so again you will output zero. Again in the next clock pulse one will come. You will zero. Okay, then again zero. Now you can notice you have detected three ones. Okay, now for this one, for this one you can notice for. Okay, just focus on this one. Focus on this one. Okay, now the output will be one. Okay, okay. So here the output should be one. And then now you have okay again the one is coming. Then again you will say that okay because three consecutive ones. Here also you have three consecutive ones. And here also you have three consecutive ones. So if you detect three or more consecutive ones, then you will output one. Now, when you detect this zero, then you will output zero. So this is the this is the point. You can notice 
in this is your w let's call it w then this is what this is your some f w this is what i am saying i am saying you need to create a finite state machine which will take some input and it will give some output and the question is saying that this is the specification this is the specification of the problem that you need to detect three or more conjugative ones in the serial bit string okay so the data is coming bit by bit okay so in a serial manner so the bits are applied the bits are applied serially okay the bits are applied you can notice the bits are applied serially in synchronization with the clock means in every clock okay in every clock one bit is coming so basically i can say in every clock one bit is applied okay in every clock one input bit is applied so this is what we want to say okay now let's let's create this okay so how can we create this so the idea is very simple that okay let's create okay so let us assume that initially okay you are okay initially you are in this state so let's assume this is the initial state okay initially no data is coming so i can say initially your circuit is reset okay initially there is no data now now let us assume the data is coming okay if you okay if you have zero if zero is coming then you don't have to do anything okay so you can notice if the input is zero if the input zero is coming okay if the input zero is coming then all you, what you should output okay if this input zero is coming if this input zero is coming then output also should be zero correct okay very simple because remember i told you that if this is your input bit stream I, again okay so for example if if your input bit stream is 0 0 1 1 okay 1 uh, 1 0 okay like this then the output what should be okay the output should be okay the output should be for this 0 this should be the 0 okay and 0 so you can notice as long as 0 are coming okay if if the input is 0 then the output also should be 0 now when you see a 1 then you will remember that you have seen 1 1 okay remember okay here you have not seen any 1 now here you will see 1 1 okay so when you see this 1 okay now when you see this 1 again the output should be 0 so you can notice when you see this first 1 when you see the first 1 then the output should be 0 remember this is your input okay so let me tell you that this is your input bit this is your input bit and this is your output this is your output so if you see this first one then again you will output one okay now if you see another one if you see another one then also output will be zero then also output will, but if you see the third one if you see the third one this is the third one remember this is the third one then the output should be one okay now if you see any one okay now in this state now if you see any one then the output should be one you can notice if you see zero zero okay zero zero then the output should be zero zero okay now first one should give you zero the second one should give you should give you zero okay now the third one okay the third one should give you one now any number of ones can come now any number of ones can come now when zero comes then again zero now the first one again zero like this okay so this is what i want to say so you can notice if you see the third one then the output should be one okay now any number of one comes now if one comes then the output should be one one comes output should be one one comes output should be one okay now now you can notice in this state if zero comes if zero comes then again again uh, if zero comes then again you will wait for three ones if zero comes then you will output zero and again you will wait for three ones okay so this is the idea now you can also notice that okay so uh, in this state if zero comes see okay in this state there is no one you have you have not seen any uh, one okay in this state you have seen one the first one you have seen the first one you have seen in this state if zero comes then what i should do very simple if, if the zero comes then i should again wait for if the zero comes then i should again wait for three ones correct in this state if zero comes then i should wait for three ones okay again i should wait for three ones similarly in this state also okay very similar in the similar manner i can say that in this state also if you see a one yeah, if you see a zero in this state also if you see a zero then you will output zero and you will again wait for three ones okay so this is the whole idea i hope this uh, so this is your this is the state diagram of the machine that you want to create remember this is the state diagram of fsm fsm means sequence circuit okay remember this is the state diagram of the sequence circuit that we need to design that we need to design okay so you can notice from this uh, state diagram you can very easily see okay very 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 easily so you can see that uh, what we need to do okay what we need to do okay so if you have basically how many states you need you can notice how many states you need so you need four states okay a b c d so basically we need four states okay so total four states we need okay 
okay so you can notice total uh, four states we need so if we need so basically i can say okay so we need four states so we need four states if if we need four states then how many flip flop we need because we need four states so i can say we need two flip flop needed okay so we okay so two flip flop are needed because i told you that with two flip flop you can create four states so i can say two flip flops are needed if you want to create a sequence circuit then two flip flops will be needed okay so this is the point okay 